in the face of insurmountable odds. He accomplished the unthinkable. Lessons about perseverance and overcoming adversity abound in his narrative. Adapt the lessons he learned on his voyage to your own life by watching the video all the way to the finish. Picture yourself at the age of 19. Do you recall all the aspirations, ambitions, purposes, and intentions you had? At the age of 19, Lawrence Showers was much in love with his fiancée Sabina, who he was also studying and working part-time. Marrying. Purchasing a home. Beginning a family. And savoring every moment together were their dreams. Regrettably. A job accident occurred when Lawrence was on a day off from studies. He was operating a forklift when he careened off a bridge into the fog. He was crushed and hurt on the arm and half of his body when a four-ton forklift fell on him. He miraculously stayed conscious despite the shock. Amputations were required due to the fractured bones and broken bones in his lower body. Nobody thought Lawrence would make it. Much less have a regular life after that. He had the support of his loved ones. Including Sabina. Who spent many nights at his hospital bedside as he battled. Throughout his six life-saving procedures. Sabina was by his side, reassuring him at every turn. Lawrence wrote the words, I love you on a note and gave it to Sabina before she underwent a dangerous operation. Lawrence started to get better. Against all odds. Upon awakening, he beheld the same warm-hearted eyes and the recognizable smile that had become cherished by him. Nobody thought their romance would last. Even Lawrence's parents would have been accepting if she decided to leave because everyone thought the person would find someone else. Surprisingly. Though. She insisted that their relationship had remained unchanged since the amputation. She promised her loved ones that she would take care of them and that everything would be all right. Seeing such a commitment in a time when one-third of marriages end in divorce is an honor. Modern society seems to have forgotten what love is. She devoted herself to nursing her beloved. A profession that requires enormous daily work. While her colleagues, who are barely 18 years old, squander their time on TikTok filming frivolous stuff. How many girls of 18 could do for Lawrence what Sabina did? Lawrence. On the other hand, showed amazing bravery by refusing to give up after his accident that changed his life. Of course. He owes a lot to his fiancée. His family's steadfast support. Skilled medical attention. And a culture that accepts individuals with impairments. These elements have protected Lawrence from the worst aspects of his illness and allowed him to maintain his sense of self. If Lawrence had gone through the similar situation in any of the nations, I wonder what would have happened to him. It's interesting to think about. Sabina says. He's everything to me. This experience has changed our way of life. Even simple activities have grown difficult. But we manage. Even though we're young. We're tough. Lawrence persists and I refuse to allow him to. He is my life. But I frequently hear advice that says I should move on and concentrate on my own life. People don't understand how we can be together if we can't even have a physical relationship, the woman says. But that's not the main focus of our affection. We were fine for a long while even if our intimacy was restricted. In relationships where there is no genuine connection. Physical proximity is just significant. Ours is based on a deeper principle. Though Lawrence's body was crushed by the forklift. Love has always been the only thing that could touch our universe. I was enamored with him for his true nature. Lawrence quips. I know what Sabina could have told you. 
And I'll say this, she's not lying. In other words, if something had occurred to her, I would have acted in the same manner. God, for his part, spared my life. Maybe my purpose is to motivate others through my example. Since the accident, I've come to realize that our greatest worth is found within. I'm not any less of a person for having lost half of my body. I really think that we are more than our bodies. I hope everyone stays well and doesn't let anything stop them. Everything will work out okay. Being surrounded by people who love you is what matters most. I'm immensely appreciative of life for giving me another chance. I give thanks to God every day for bringing Sabina into my life. With her. I could not accomplish this. She gives me the willpower to persevere. Many people may wonder how I manage without certain physical abilities. But be assured that losing them hasn't diminished who I am as a man, one with goals and aspirations of my own. Even if it might take more time and work now to accomplish them. I won't give up. I'll figure out a means to provide for our family and lead the life we've always desired. While Sabina blogs about their experiences and pursues part-time studies in business and marketing, Lawrence continues his education at the university with the goal of earning a master's degree in IT technology. Let's hope that these courageous people's goals and desires come true and wish them all the best. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. As they reached the corner, you could hear a group of six students laughing loudly and making noise. Tommy, their commander, saw Michael in the corridor and grinned. For career day, Michael, a third grader in an advanced wheelchair, was decked up as a police officer, complete with a shiny badge and a clean blue uniform. On his head rested a small police cap, Tommy chuckled and gave his buddies a shove, saying, Hey look, it's the wannabe cop. Michael remained unfazed, he had already dealt with bullies on numerous occasions, sometimes as a result of his legs not exactly functioning when he had hoped, it wasn't the same today. Bullies were more interested in the uniform he proudly wore than in his legs. Michael gave them a friendly wave, although some of them he knew from previous classes. He didn't consider them to be close pals, still, he'd never had an issue with them previously, but Tommy was not up for a nice conversation. With a twisted smile on his lips, he shoved his friend aside and bent over Michael. What on earth was a kid like him doing as a cop? He mockingly asked Michael. Tommy's words caused a knot to form in Michael's stomach, and the way he towered over him felt much more frightening than the normal playful banter. Michael, though, was not going to let this bully to spoil his day. He inhaled deeply and looked directly into Tommy's eyes. It's career day, Michael gently reminded them. I'm dressed like a cop because police officers help people and keep them safe. Tommy sneered dismissively, his prejudices skewing his view of police. To his mind, police officers merely dictated to individuals and made arrests. He added a harsh comment about how his condition will keep him from ever being a real police officer while sneering at Michael's legs. Michael felt a knot in his stomach from frustration. Tommy was mistaken about police. He understood it. He had met good police officers in real life who were always willing to help, and he had seen them on television. He even owned a picture book that told tales of courageous police officers and canines saving kittens from trees, however, Tommy's jeers hurt. Even though he was aware that being a cop may be difficult given his leg condition, he didn't let that deter him, Tommy grabbed Michael's shirt front before he could answer, let go of me, Michael yelled, detesting it when someone touched him without consent, Tommy, however, disregarded Michael's objections and laughed viciously when he and his pals dragged Michael from his wheelchair, with his breath taken away. Michael fell to the hard, chilly floor. Even though the hard tiles hurt his arms, he forced himself to hold back his emotions so the bullies wouldn't enjoy watching him cry. Fear had a deeper hold on him as he gazed about, a few feet away, his police cap gleamed, and his priceless badge had tumbled off and was now rolling down the stairs. Michael reached desperately for his hat, but before he could get it, one of the bullies grabbed it. Tommy was the one making fun of Michael in front of his buddies. 
His face contorted with vile delight, the badge hovering just out of Michael's grasp, Michael's eyes filled with tears once more, but they were motivated by rage this time. It wasn't equitable. He'd done no wrong at all. Michael wanted nothing more than to flaunt his stylish police outfit, which he had picked out with the assistance of his amazing aunt and uncle. The vivid blue hue gave him a sense of height and power. Despite his legs' uncooperative nature, like the heroes he saw on TV. He aspired to be one himself, but by forcing him out of his wheelchair, these vicious thugs had dashed his hopes, now, his dream outfit felt more like a prop in a cruel joke when he lay stretched out on the chilly floor. At Michael's school, career day was much anticipated, everyone had the opportunity to dress up as the professions they wished to pursue when they grew up, including astronauts, physicians, and firefighters. Aspirations and dreams filled the passageways. Michael had always been captivated by police officers, even as a child, he enjoyed seeing them on TV, apprehending criminals and rescuing others in need, they were real-life superheroes to him, and he was one of them now, but his illusion was shattered when the bullies transformed his dream into a nightmare, for Michael, facing difficulties was nothing new, since he was a little over a year old. He had been somewhat altered by his cerebral palsy, unlike other babies his age. The doctors had informed his parents that he wasn't crawling or babbling, it was hard to control his motions because his muscles were weak, the news broke his parents, who were young and ill-prepared, they were terrified and perplexed by this discovery because they had high hopes for their family, feeling overwhelmed, Michael's father departed, leaving his mother to manage everything on her own. She started drinking to make her troubles go away, his wife, his dad's brother. And his uncle were the ones that came in and supported him, they took in Michael, pampered him, and gave him the confidence that he could accomplish anything he set his mind to, in addition to fighting for the greatest education possible and enrolling him in specialized therapy programs, they most significantly treated him like any other child, they even gave him the coolest wheelchair he had ever seen, shiny, agile and as elegant as his own sports car. Michael saw his condition as a challenge to overcome rather than a constraint as a result of their teaching him how to navigate the world, he worked on using his voice to communicate, his thoughts to be determined, and his arms to be strong, not these thugs, nor anything else, could stop him. Tommy continued to tower over Michael, unabated in his tormenting, but before Tommy could move a step farther. A voice pierced the tense atmosphere and yelled at Tommy to stop bothering Michael. The voice was immediately recognizable to Michael as Sarah, a sweet student from his class who was always there to defend the rights of those who were unable to defend themselves, she wasn't the biggest girl in school, but even Michael was astonished by the strength in her voice, leave him alone, Tommy, Sarah yelled again, Michael didn't do anything wrong, so he should not be bullied. Despite Tommy's scoff, the enchantment appeared to be broken by Sarah's abrupt intervention, he cast a quick glance at his companions, who were visibly tense up now, their former bluster was beginning to fade, perhaps picking on a disabled child wasn't as fun as they imagined, throwing the badge down onto the floor, Tommy shot one more look at Michael before muttering something about losers, Michael was left on the chilly floor when he and the other bullies moved away, with worried expressions on her face. Sarah hastened to Michael's side, she helped him wipe the grime from his uniform and gently inquired whether he was well, despite the sharp ache in his arm and the sting from his scratched knee, Michael forced himself to crack a little smile, after assuring her that he was okay, he expressed his gratitude for her assistance, one of Michael's math classmates, David, stepped in to retrieve Michael's hat after it had fallen to the floor and returned it to him. They assisted Michael in getting back into his wheelchair, and Sarah was there as well, getting him back into his seat wasn't easy, but they succeeded, before repinning Michael's badge to his uniform, Sarah used her sleeve to clean it of grime, this is a cool uniform, Michael, Sarah stated with genuine enthusiasm, complimenting his realistic police officer look, Michael beamed with pride as he examined his somewhat worn and dusty outfit, which served as a constant reminder of his aspiration, his day had been spared, despite the bully's best efforts, they couldn't get past him, Michael returned to school the following day wearing his police suit with confidence, but this time there were others, from the school gate to class, Sarah and David strolled beside him, astounded by the sudden outpouring of support, 
the bullies stood by helplessly. No amount of bullying could have diminished Michael's bravery and resolve. Despite his disabilities, he was confident in his ability to overcome any challenge because of his newfound pals. Unexpected means of communication allowed word of Michael's bullying to reach the city police department, Lucky Sarah. Her dad was actually a police officer named Officer Miller. Officer Miller was enraged when Sarah related the whole story to her dad that day. It seemed unbelievable to Officer Miller that someone would pick on a young boy, particularly one with a disability, just because he wanted to be a police officer. That type of conduct is not acceptable, Officer Miller proclaimed with anger. He was hell-bent on demonstrating true bravery to Michael and those bullies. After dropping Sarah off at school the following day, Officer Miller went above and above. Entering the school parking lot, he set a course of action. After hearing Michael's heroic deeds and the brutality of the bullies, he contacted his colleagues at the Harris County Sheriff's Office. The precinct cops shared Michael's revulsion and admiration for his courage in the face of the tragedy. They wanted to prove to him that being a police officer was more than just a goal. It was an accomplishment to be proud of. A scheme to elevate Michael's hero complex was hatched by the two of them. They spoke with the head of school, gave him the rundown and asked for approval to celebrate Michael's life on campus. After hearing Michael's experience, the principal was very receptive to the idea. Michael was greeted with an incredible sight the following morning. Outside his residence, there was a flashing black cop car. Miller was one of several officers in their pristine blue uniforms who waited by, ready to take action. They smiled at Michael the moment he stepped out of the car. Michael Martinez reporting for duty, Officer Thompson. One of the cops, noted, from his patrols throughout the neighborhood, Michael knew him, Michael couldn't believe it, a police car was being offered to him as a transportation to school, compared to his expectations, this was really fantastic, with his pulse racing, he was assisted into the driver's seat of the patrol vehicle, for Michael, today was no ordinary day. He was fortunate enough to be transported to school in a police vehicle and to be in the company of true heroes. Along the way to the school, a lengthy procession of patrol cars accompanied them, the enormous grin that Michael wore on his face would not budge, there was substance to the police escort, and he experienced the sensation of being a real-life parade marshal, Michael found out on the way that the department had prepared a unique celebration to celebrate him. They hoped to honor his desire to become a police officer and his courage in the face of bullying. Everyone got out of their cars and gasped in amazement as they came up to the school's door, Michael was escorted out of the patrol cruiser by Officer Miller as the crowd erupted in jubilation, there was a large gathering outside, including students, instructors, and even some parents, Michael stepped out of the police vehicle with a confident air, his clothes freshly cleaned and shining, he went from being a timid bullied kid to an inspiration to those who saw him. Michael will be receiving a special honor the principal declared to the assembled crowd while standing proudly on the stairs, holding a microphone, Officer Miller moved forward, he stated in front of everyone how shocked and saddened the Harris County Sheriff's Department was by Michael's ordeal, he made the highly esteemed announcement that they had chosen to formally induct Michael as an honorary Harris County Deputy Constable. Michael watched in disbelieving silence when the crowd cheered, he received a junior police helmet and a little badge from Officer Miller, though honorary, Michael's position as a deputy was now formally recognized, the surprises, however, didn't stop there. Inspired by Michael's courage, the district attorney's office named him an honorary investigator, his fast thinking won the Houston Fire Department over, and they swore him in as a junior firefighter. With every honor that was given to him, the audience's applause became louder, Michael's day was about more than simply the accolades and titles, though those were awesome, too. It was about showing him that his aspirations were worthy of being pursued and celebrated, and about honoring his bravery and fortitude in the face of hardship. Not only were the signals issued that day an impressive demonstration of police power, but they also conveyed a very important message. Bullying would not be accepted. They stressed that courage and determination were the keys to true strength, which Michael possessed in plenty. The time Michael faced his tormentors was the most significant. Tommy and his gang watched in shock as Michael, who had earlier been the subject of taunts and abuse, was now praised by the police department and the entire school, their faces reddened with shame at the realization of how wrong they had been. 
Tommy and his pal's punishment was immediate and unambiguous, they were made to write sincere letters of apology to Michael in addition to being suspended from school, the real cost, though, was the guilt they felt for underestimating someone far braver than themselves, Michael deserved all the accolades and distinctions given to him, he would demonstrate it in just two weeks, after the ceremonies and accolades. Michael's life fell into a cozy routine, he went to school, lived with Sarah and David, and hung a special certificate on his wall designating him as an honorary deputy constable, which he did with pride. Michael, however, never lost sight of his goal of becoming a police officer. He spent a lot of time watching police dramas, learned codes from Officer Miller, and went to weekend police conferences. He also upheld the rights of the oppressed, demonstrating justice in his own unique manner. Then, on a calm night, something occurred that would demonstrate to everyone Michael's bravery. He pinched his nose in disgust, sensing a weird, slight metallic smell in his chamber. Michael's eyes watered a little at the intensity of the smell when he sought to pinpoint it. He suddenly realized that the lecturer of the course he had attended as a rookie firefighter had discussed gas leaks and the risks of carbon monoxide poisoning. Michael remembered that while carbon monoxide alone had no scent, exhaust gases frequently had an odd, musty odor. A stab of fear went through him. Could a gas leak be the cause of this odd smell? Though panic tried to overtake him, Michael discovered courage deep below. He realized he had to move fast. Michael was alone in his upstairs room while his uncle slept downstairs, and the only issue was that he couldn't reach his wheelchair. Quickly thinking, Michael reached for his walking stick, the one he relied on for assistance when necessary. He gripped it tightly and used all of his effort to pound the stick against the bedroom door. The silence of the night was broken by the thumping that reverberated throughout the quiet house, the persistent noise awakened Michael's uncle below. As he listened, his heart raced, wondering if there was an intruder or a fire. He hastily got out of bed and hurried over to investigate the sounds. The heavy metallic smell struck him too, making his blood freeze when he made his way to Michael's chamber. There was a gas leak coming from the area next to Michael's bedroom upstairs. Uncle Michael hurriedly pried open the door. He sputter coughed due to the overwhelming odor. Michael was pale with terror as he pointed desperately toward the window which he witnessed, the next move was second nature to Michael's uncle, he snatched a moist towel to shield his nose and mouth from the cold air, then flung open another window to let in a gust of wind, they snatched Michael from his arms, took hold of his wife's hand, and bolted out of the home, gasping for air. Collapsing in the grass, gasping for oxygen, they did not move until they were far enough away, Michael, whose body quivered with a mix of terror and relief, clutched desperately to his uncle, in the midst of his overwhelming mixture of fear and pride, his uncle embraced him tightly, they were just rescued by his courageous nephew, they hurriedly described the scenario and contacted 911 outside. The fire department sirens shook the night sky when they swiftly made their way to the scene, Michael, bundled up in his blanket, watched as the firemen skillfully extinguished the gas leak and made sure the house was safe to live in, Michael was bowed down to by a fire authority after the gas leak had been contained and the property had been deemed secure, saying, You're a brave boy, Michael, he continued, You rescued your loved ones this evening. You were quick to act when you had a feeling something wasn't right, with a renewed sense of respect, Michael's uncle stared at him, You came to our rescue, champion, he proclaimed, a feeble grin escaped Michael's lips, even if he hadn't intended to become a hero that night. His bravery and wits undoubtedly spared his loved one's lives. Once again, word of Michael's courage spread. His heroic deeds were covered by both local and national media. Michael, the young guy who aspired to join the police force, had become a role model for many. The town looked up to Michael ever since that day. Michael Martinez went by more names than just the boy in the wheelchair. He became a junior deputy, an honorary investigator, a firefighter and a hero to others around him for standing up to bullies and showing resilience, a modest act of bravery can have a huge impact. As Michael's story demonstrated, it proved that every goal, no matter how lofty, is within reach, above all else, it proved that real heroism consists of being nice and resilient. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts, feel free to share your opinions in the comment section. 
If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.